got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm here with Bradley Will. We're live at the Prosper Show in Las Vegas. So we're going to talk about webinar tips, how to boost your business with webinars. And uh, Bradley is an expert at webinars. So we're going to, for whatever your e-commerce business, any business, if you are using webinars, which is converting really well for people, um, and it's personalized and you get great uh, results, uh, we're going to talk about some tips. So Bradley, what is uh, one tip that people should make sure to do when they are using webinars for their business? I think the first thing is to be unique, um, not be a copycat. I think there's a lot of businesses that, and you see a lot of webinars online, find a unique angle that people in your market are not doing or not saying to make your webinar stand out. And then you have a good one about using objections in webinars. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I think um, don't ever assume that you know what your you know audience wants. I think it's good to like predict in advance. So make a list of objections that you would anticipate that your audience would have prior to you doing your close on your webinar. Like what things would come up from them to keep them from buying or questions that they would ask. Make a list of those and try to inject these objections into your presentation uh, so you can kind of anticipate the things that are going to come up in advance so you're not, you know, like if you do a QA and a at the end of the webinar, you're not, you know, trying to answer every question and every objection on the spot. Yeah, so integrate those objections, weave them throughout the webinar, so you're basically answering their questions before they even have a chance to ask them. Yeah, I mean, you can do it through, like, case studies, through testimonials. Like, you can find ways to work those objections into the presentation and be creative uh, with it so it's not, like, rapid-fire FAQ at the end of the presentation. Yeah, this is one of the best things I've heard you say, and I think of it over and over. What's some common objections that you've seen people weave in? What's an example of uh, there's an objection and how they weaved it in? That's a good question. Um, I know like time, money, and trust are big objections. I don't know if you want to touch on any of those of what you've seen out there of how they've weaved in one of those into the, into the actual webinar. Will this work for me? So like everybody has a very unique way, usually on how they use the product. So I might be feeling like, will, yeah, it works for them, but will it work for me? And a great way to integrate this in is find testimonials that are really relevant of your customers using your customers, your clients using the product. So they're like, hey, this is how so-and-so is using it and the results that they've had. And then the pe- person that's watching will be like, oh yeah, you know, that really relates to me you know, seeing them, somebody very similar to me using the product. I love that. Will this work for me? So everyone can make a list of objections that that people have and definitely include the will this work for me, include a case study, an example. Uh, Yeah, anything final words about webinars in general um, that people should be thinking about? Always have a call to action. Mm. So give people something to do. You got to make it value-based to get somebody on. You gotta give before you make an ask. But at the end of the presentation, you can either sell your product, but if your product is, like let's say you have a really uh, you know, high price point product, right, or a customized product, you may, instead of wanting to try to ask for a sale on the spot, pre-qualify people and send them to an application or some kind of questionnaire to pre-qualify them and then get on the phone and yeah. you know, have a, a consult or you know, close yeah. the business over the phone. Yeah. I mean, I've seen I've, uh, people, there's, you know, there's obviously, it varies for the price point is, but I've seen people, the general rule be, I'm curious your opinion on this, 
maybe like 1,500 to 2,000 and above, send them to an application and get on the phone. And then below that, maybe you could send them directly to possibly an offer, or sales, you know, a sales page or something like that. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's a good benchmark. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously it depends. Depends on who is in the audience, right? And that goes back to knowing your audience really well and knowing what they'll respond to. Like if you know that that's an impulse buy or something that somebody's going to rapidly like not have to do a lot of thought or thinking in order to purchase, then you can make that offer live on the webinar. If it's going to take a little bit of qualification and understanding if they're right for the product, because like, you don't want to sell something to somebody that it, you don't know that they're going to be the right fit, and then you risk refunding, re risk chargebacks, and so forth. So um, I think that's a good benchmark to go from. But really know your audience. You know, we talked to somebody that has a $2,000 a month product and they felt it's a better, you know, fit to, you know, pre-qualify and talk to somebody on right, the phone. Right. Yeah. All right. Live from the Prosper Show, definitely think about using webinars in your business. And if you are, think about some of the things that we talked about. Thanks, Bradley. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. Like a beach if you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand